Hello friends, thank you for stopping by once again. My name is Ola Jumoke and you're welcome back to my channel. In today's episode, we'll be discussing something a bit different and that is we'll be going to the world of sports. And to do that with us today is none other than a very skilled sports journalist who has risen over time and we'll be asking him a couple of questions and finding out how it has been in Nigeria, you know, being a sport journalist in Nigeria. Oh well, now we'll find out, so stay tuned. As a player, as an individual. Now, with everything he has said, how do you come with your argument that Liverpool will not want to retain that title? But you know, I, I said earlier when I started talking about they're trying to plug in a hole where there is no hole. Now, you, you brought in a Tiago Alcantara, who is a like for like kind of player with Jorginho Ronaldo, who is still very much in the team. He hasn't left the team yet. Yeah. Now, like I said, bringing a Tiago into the team also means you have to alter the system of the team in order to accommodate him. But you are aware that Ronaldo might be going to Barcelona. Now, the coach has given his word that the guy has assured him he's not going. Now, yet, yeah, like I said, the major reason for this, it, I can call it the panic buy in the sense that after what happened to them against Leeds United in the first game, a team that has not played League football for the past 16 seasons, they came into the season and at some point they were two one up. In fact, the game ended for three goals for that team head up from Rodrigo. Exactly. So for a team who so they had no Premier League experience, no player of any sort, Patrick Bamford at top. All right, we are welcome back. Yes, yeah, so please can we meet you, our guest for today? <laughs> yeah. Good day, my name is Emmanuel Chibuzo Oji. I'm a sports journalist, okay. graduate of English and Literary Studies from the University of Calabar. And um, I love everything sports. And why do you ask about me? Well, at, at first, I never felt I was going to do sports. Yes, I know growing up, I love sport anything sport i it's fine it's just it, football or anything sport? it started with football okay. originally it started with football um then growing up some of us i didn't have the access to having a tv set so you are passing oh. somebody's window <laughs> you see them showing a match you stand by the window you're watching, watching. so at, at that early age i was anything that has to do with football so i think my parents everybody knew my siblings knew that ah this one so they've given me up on me when it comes to sport but I think growing up, I remember the question someone asked me once, what would you like to do? I just said naively, I want to be a bank manager. I think the words sounded so sweet in my, <laughs> in my mouth. So I, I, I was riding with that, I was riding with that until, one, how did it change? I just woke up one day and someone asked me, hey, what do you want to do? I just, the next thing that came to my mind was, I want to study mass com. So, mm. the, so the next time, mm. my mom was like, ah, since when did it change from, and when I said mass com, I don't know what mass com, entailed i didn't know what it was all about of course everybody who knew me growing up knew that i love sports anything mm. sports so i just said mass come so someone said mass come so the person was not explaining what mass come but i didn't know what it was so i think from there on i just had to now dovetail and i think i now found out too that to be a bank manager there was no mass <laughs> i said okay so there was no there was no, no need. need there was no need <laughs> let's not go let's down not go route. there so i i just i think i just like i said it sounded so nice Mm, um, mm. bank manager and yes, no. there was no prestige yes there was no knowledge of what it entails to mm. be a bank manager so when i now changed it to mass comp so i just woke up and someone asked me so when the person started explaining i think it's uh, wow this is more like what i would have loved to do so i now went to now make more research what does it entail for me to be a bank manager mm. the first thing i knew that i must know mass yes. i said no no at this point <laughs> let us stay somewhere, stay somewhere else and mm. so uh, after then i started i already knew i had passion for sports i was anything sports radio tv i don't joke with it i was watching following it passionately i knew all the sports program from 5 a.m to about 9 a.m in lagos growing up I, I just had to find a way to listen so my parents everybody just knew that i was i was out for sports so i think at some point i was going getting hired i think the passion to want to becoming a sport presenter was coming up i never planned for it i never wanted i never dreamt from childhood i was not one of those i would say i was born with sport and i didn't know people can tell you that i was born with a microphone in my hands no i wasn't i think it, i just found out that okay since i already love sports 
Because there are people who love to play football, mm -hmm. but they never had passion towards sport journalism. Mm, so, yeah. so I can end yeah. up loving football growing up or sports, but I end up not want to be a sport journalist. So I think with, as time went by, like I said, just started with football first. After a while, I started having interest in other sports. Of course, growing up, we knew that the best golfer in the world was Tiger Woods. Ah, who is this guy? Everything, every tournament is all about him. In tennis, there were some other guys, Pete Sampras, before we saw the Novak Djokovic and the rest of them. Or, and after a while, I just felt, okay, I started knowing that some sport journalists only knew just football. So when it was not time for mm. me to now make a decision for myself, I just felt, I don't want to just be a football person. I want to be a sports person. I want to be an all-rounded sports journalist. So you can fit in anywhere, anywhere yes. under that sport. Under that sport, yes, yes umbrella. Mm. And there are some journalists in Nigeria, well-renowned sports journalists. They don't know anything about Nigerian football, Nigerian sports. Just international. Just international. If it's not Chelsea, if it's not Man U, Arsenal, <laughs> Barca. So, they don't so know a I just felt and, uh, no, they don't know all this exactly. United, uh. No, so <laughs> Rivers United and the rest of yeah. them, DYFC. So I just felt charity begins at home. Mm. Now, and one of the lessons I learned from it was that, or is that, the international press, BBC, Sky Sport, they can never start any of their programs. In fact, they can do an entire three hours program with not even the Nigerian news. They are projecting their own. What is theirs? Who is there to project our so, exactly. So, if all of us are dovetailing towards mm. going to talk Chelsea and Arsenal, who will talk about what we have there? I just felt okay, first thing first, let me know as much as I can know as it concerns Nigerian sport, not just football, mm. basketball, tennis, badminton, mm -hmm. the little you can know, just have a grasp of it. Yes. And from then on, you can sit and stand anywhere and rub shoulders and talk with the rest of them. Just so you know, I'm sure I'm, I'm sure I didn't mention it to you, but one of the reasons I have you on here today is the fact that your love for sports made you go into it. You know, you got a career from loving sports, which is very impressive. You know, yeah. some of we need to, as young people, we need to really know what we love, and if there's a way there, we should go for it. Uh, yeah, which, it's very important. We should go for what we love, what we have passion for. You know, now you, you love sports. Would you go and be telling sports in the bank if you had gotten the bank job? If you, even if you knew math. I, 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 I'm all, I, I, please don't rub that in. Don't rub that in. I've always told people this that I, I pictured myself many times in a bank or in another firm that is not sport related. And I see myself, maybe we are having an early morning meeting, 7 a.m. board meeting. Mm. And I'm, I'm sneaking in my earpiece to mm, listen to, to sports. Listen I, I, told, I told myself it would have been a disaster. I would have been making the money, but that fulfillment may not have been there. Because it there's was. something about fulfillment that you're being paid peanuts, but there's this excitement you have whenever you're doing it. Yes. That's it. That's and and, and truly, people, or there's this notion that nationalism doesn't pay too well. But What's it coming to that? <laughs> yeah, there, there, there are people who believe that, that it doesn't pay too well. But there's this, there's a, a renowned celebrity, OEP, actress, I don't want to call her name, you know her. Mm -hmm. She was saying of all the jobs she does, what pays her the least amount of money is journalism. But that is what she loves doing the most. Yeah, so that, it. She has other businesses that has given, that is giving her money. She yes. travels out of the country. But of all the jobs she does, the one that pays her the least of all of them is a media personality and OEP and that's the one she loves the most. So I've always given this uh, illustration. A lot of the teachers we have in our universities, in our secondary schools, in our primary schools, never wanted to be teachers. There is a lack of job in the country. Someone just connection, connection, they put them. That's why they treat the job with so much levity. They don't have respect for that it. Yes. That so, so I've seen, seen I, I can make that e e e e example yeah. every time for teachers. Mm. So mm. that's why mm. I just said, and there's a few people in the mid, in, the, in, journal, in journalism as well, who never wanted to be journalists. But in the course of the journey, maybe as time went by, or, uh, they now started falling, having interest for it. Yes. So, and that one is also there. Yes, that it's also there. So there. Just, uh, just as we have them in the banking sector, mm. I, I know I have a colleague, a friend growing up, he studied fishery. If you ever watch this, I know he, he knows I'm referring to him. <laughs> he studied fishery in the University of Benin. Since he left school, he has been in the banking sector. Since he left, the first day he was going for the interview, I remember his countenance when we were talking. Wow, I'm going for one. And he got it. He has been there till today. 
and uh, it's someone you know as well very well and uh, so there are people who found themselves in in a place they never expected to be because of how what they say sometimes in nigeria dreams don't come true so most times whenever you find yourself in any sector just make the most out of it so i will say there are people who are in in journalism sec sector who don't like they don't love it you are admiring them but you just feel what brought me here was something because there was no job and there are people who are there because they have passion they, have, they love it and truly let me tell you the truth in journalism there are people who you just have to know one or two persons that will drag you into it no matter how qualified you think you might be i keep saying you keep in asking in nigeria i think it may not just be in nigeria because it applies to virtually it's a global thing it's a global phenomenon where someone just one of your uncle you don't have a job i have a friend who is the manager of susu uh, media house i'll give him i'll tell you would you mind because you are you've been at home for a while okay i don't mind uncle you go there maybe they school you for three months six months you yes. end up doing it and after a while for you some people interest for it they develop for interest some, some don't some don't develop the interest it's just because this is paying my paying my bills i'm enjoying it it's yeah. giving me fame people know me everywhere and there's some people you speak with them but you are popular I beg, who popularity help? This is not what I wanted to do. So there are some who are doing it two, three, four, five years to save up to go and do what they want to do proper. I know of a friend too, engineering. He found himself in the banking sector. He never wanted to be in the bank. He was saving up, saving up. While he was at it, he was applying for every exam, engineering exam, until finally, finally, what he was looking for. Yes. But while he was there, people were admiring him. But every day was like a nightmare for him in the banking sector because that's not what he wanted to do. So for sports. It's always been something I, I wanted to do and I, I thank God I'm in my sector, in my segment. Um, there are a lot of people who have, I, I made it, and I made a decision to go that if I see anybody who has a burning desire or passion for sports journalism, any little way I can to help the person come into the sector, even if as, a, as an intern, as any, 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 any capacity that can help you. Because I don't think you uh, Why? Uh, try doing research, you know finding out more about sport journalism before this interview but i don't think that that many sport journalists in nigeria are they yeah yeah <laughs> or maybe yeah. The google was not just telling yeah, me what google, I was google does not do that's <laughs> what it means google does not <laughs> do i mean in nigeria they don't know the answer that's why they give see. they only gave me top was it top 20 or top and i'm like is this are these see, all the people my, my, we my, have here my decision the decision i made to help anybody is not just in the sporting sector once you have passion to be a media personality, mm. you have a burning desire. There are people who said, I met someone who said she's teaching, but her heart has always been to be an OEP, to be a presenter. So it could be in a new sector. It doesn't have to be sport. The only thing I need to do is to meet whoever in, in that department. Please, do you need an intern? Do you need someone you can tutor? Even if it's just to intern, you know, yes. Just to have so while you are at it, and some people have, are blessed with this when they come into a place, one or two months they learn. So. As, I, as when you said there are no more, I'm look. I'm already creating a mental picture in my head. How the journey all started for me. Um, mm. I, 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 I've, I've never answered that, that question. It was in Calabar, University of Calabar. While I was there, I was schooling in University of Calabar, and just close to me was Crossover State Broadcasting Corporation, CRBC Radio and TV. So I, the first time I went for my post I made a decision that God, I would love to work here. I met a lady who said, uh, "Don't worry, she will link me up with someone who is there." And before I knew it, I gained the admission. I went there. The lady said, okay, he will talk with the guy. Before he could say Jack Robinson, the lady misplaced her phone. She could not contact me again. And finally, 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 when the next time we saw, the guy who was there has left the place. The new person who got the job, ironically, was my next door neighbor. So every day, they are arguing. He just works his yes. in his own way, really. The, his thing is. Every day, they are arguing football. So one time, you come back home. So in fact, those boys, I, I, I miss them. They are men now. Some of them are married. Today they are arguing football. As in, they can do that for like seven hours. While they are at it, so, someone is cooking for them. One of the guys is cooking. The next day they are arguing among the disciples who was the best. Peter, John, the Baptist, James. The third day they are arguing politics. The fourth day they are arguing music. So every day was. So when someone had told them, people are arguing sport. There's this guy who wants to. Why does he not come to join us and talk sport? I just, it took me about four, five, six months until one day I think we were talking. The guy is heading, ah, I never knew you were this good. Okay, um, I'll take you to the studio tomorrow. He didn't come. I said, I just, I made, then I made, I was in the phase of my life where I said, if anybody promised me anything, because you came to make the promise to me, I won't bug you. Since God put it in your heart, you have to, except you tell me, please remind me. 
So the guy now came to knock on my gate one day. Please, let's go. We went there. We did the program. It was on a Friday. The guy was impressed. So we went to the radio. So when we finished, one man just asked, where did you get this guy from? He said, this guy, is a, I was a fresher. I was in school. So this guy is a fresher. The man said he can never be a fresher. He doesn't talk like a fresher. <laughs> He's too and, skilled and to be a fresher. And funny enough, that was, the, and that was the first time I was going on air. So while I was going on air, the very first person I called was Pastor Siri. Beautiful and Pastor Tayo. Ironically, I call them differently, but it's not both of them were in Abuja at the same time going to Sokoto to minister. So finished it. The next day, being Saturday, the guy took me there on air, one hour TV, just the two of us. So one pastor usually come around, saw me in Uyo on the TV. I was in Calabar. Ah, this person looks like Chibuzo. So he was calling my phone because I wasn't picking. He just felt that ah, this is the guy. So when the program ended, I called him. He said, I saw someone on TV that looked like you. I said, Yeah, it's me. And he was in the year, was in Calabar. So that was how. So the guy did not call me again for a long while after that. So I think he said his, the DM told him, whoever you are bringing next must be a cross -Siverian. So, So I think after a while, the guy just stubbornly took me again. And after the program, the DM wanted to see me. And the DM called me. I heard you the first, is it two months back? He didn't call me to you again. We've had sport guys, but I think you're about the best we've had. And that was how they offered me. Yeah, it was a no, I would say no pain because it was a government enterprise. Mm. But for me, I, the money was not part of my agenda. I, was, I needed this platform to learn the job, to learn the to trade. And so, mm. as a fresher, I got it. The guy, nine months after the guy left the place, the person that brought me in, he got a, a bigger job. And as a fresh student, the job he got, he recommended me to them in the new station. And <laughs> it was enticing. Mm. Ah, living now nah, by now, talking to you, I, I won't be a graduate by now. Mm. But I have so much money in my account. Mm. So I just felt no, this admission took me a long time to come by. I will not throw it away. And that was how. So the journey has been from there and wow. started. And Your story is a pretty interesting one. <laughs> it's a yeah. pretty Wow, I think the Nigerian audience, they are a very, I don't want to use the word stubborn, it is a very interesting <laughs> audience. That they are these kind of people, I don't know if you can, if you can relate, if you're on air, mm -hmm. doing your job, mm -hmm. talking about a particular match, and you maybe mistakenly, maybe you didn't do your homework properly, mm -hmm. you give the wrong statistics on air, and it's not time for you to open your phone lines for reactions, Flash. comments. Straight Some up. just want to make a mess of you and let you know that. They know this thing more than you. It could be a mistake. It could be a case oh, of definitely. it could be a case of you mixing up your statistics. So being a sport journalist, you yeah, always tell people this. Then when they bring students on excursion to my station, they always say, "Okay, please, you, you know how to explain to people. Come and explain to the children." I always tell them journalism is supposed to be unbiased. Mm. I can beat my chest hard and tell you that everybody I've worked with or that has worked with me, from Calabar, I worked in Delta State Asaba. Worked in Port Harcourt, partly in Lagos. Everywhere I've worked with, none of my colleagues know the football club I support. And it's a decision I took a long time ago. Oh, really? Yes. Wow. I don't allow the audience to know the football club. I think for journalists, I always tell them don't allow the. Yeah, you should support the football club. Let's say you support a Barcelona or a Man United, keep it to yourself. When, you, when, you, when I come on and someone has, so which club do you support? I say I support Ayimba with bragging <laughs> rights. They say, no, no, no. No, I, uh, we want your European club. I say I don't support any, I support Ayimba FC in Aba. So, so you cannot put me in a cage. Now, this is the, the downside of it. If I tell you I'm supporting Man United, and in particular, the Chelsea, Chelsea are playing now as we speak, and Chelsea are not playing well, and I come out to talk about what is happening wrong in Chelsea, what is not making them play well. So the callers can say, because you're a Man U fan, that's why you are... I mean, why, even though whatever I'm saying is true, yeah. I've always begged up on coming sport journalists, try and put away your emotions and your sentiments when you're doing the job. If you're, if you're a club you're supporting, they're not playing well. And this is the good part of why you should not let people know the club you support. You put your emotions aside. At the point when I was growing up, the club I used to support then, then, if the team loses a match, I find it difficult to eat. I don't eat. So, I think after a while, and I had to now learn another trick, is before you are going to watch their match. <laughs> so that in case they do lose the match, 
<laughs> you know, so yes. So for. I think after a while, I think I God just helped me, and I just killed every. So I go to watch match like every other, like we, we call them in sporting term, like a neutral. You watch, you are watching the match, you criticize, you want to criticize. So I had a friend who was working in the bank at the time. One day the guy saw me after my program, and now you know the club you are supporting. You are a Chelsea fan. I said, why would you say that? The way you attack us now on air, and you just believe that. I said, okay, I agree. So why he we was seeing me of another fan? Ah, because my program was on radio and on TV. Ah, Mr. Emmanuel, lovely program. Ah, the way you are, you are, you are a national fan, the way you are attacking Chelsea on air. I said, I agree. So somebody else came, you must be a man you fan. So why you are not told the guy? I think I hear me and you did. Three people don't give me three different clubs. <laughs> You know, I said, but as I said, so the way I'm attacking Arsenal is also the way I'm attacking Chelsea. I criticize. I always say when you want to criticize, criticize constructively. Constructive criticism. Don't hear yes. from one version of the story and run with it. Now there's been a tussle in Nigerian football for a long time. We have two presidents, Amadou Pinik, and there used to be this Giwa who was have also having a claim for the presidency. So I always feel there are sometimes some journalists still towards Amadou Pinik. As I see, if you have an interview from Amadou Pinik and Giwa FC, play both of them. Don't say because you are you're supporting Amadou Pinik, Giwa must have exposed some things. You don't want to play the interview. Let the people, your job is, let the people judge. You throw the question open. And one of the things I also learned about sport journalism is um, you shouldn't be an analyst as the anchor of the program. A, a lot of sport presenters don't know this. If you are driving the show, you have your analyst in the studio, those analysts are supposed to be the experts. So yours is to drive the show, you ask the question, through the question. So many times the temptation of wanting to say something to do analysis is there for you. Maybe the two analysts you have have not hit something, you, there's something you know. So in that situation, you can use that thing you want to say and craft a question to throw at them. But it's not professional for you driving the show to also be an analyst in the same show. Except it's a one-man show, you can do the presentation and do the analysis yourself. Mm -hmm. But in the case where you have analysts, those analysts are supposed to or are seen as the experts. So you make them do the, an the analysis, do the commentary. So if they have not hit any nail on the head, you can use that thing you, you know that they've not said to craft a question and throw it at them for them to now respond. So many times you just see people who just want to go into journalism, into I want to be a sport journalist, I love sports. I keep saying, is everybody can come out and talk a mm. uh, mass number in Chelsea. So if I'm coming, if you're if you're coming to work with me, I want to audition you. I don't ask anything that has to do with Man U Chelsea Arsenal. I don't do that. I ask you Nigerian football. I ask you basketball, golf, tennis, Formula One. I don't need you to know everything about it. Just have surface knowledge of them. Choose that you are not. It's not strange to you. It's not. It's not it's something that you're familiar with. You can grow on it. Mm. I keep saying. Every time I have a chance to go on air, it's an avenue for me to learn new things. It's an avenue for me to better myself. So I, I never go on air with this with the belief that I already know all. So I listen to programs religiously. So if there are some programs, some stations, as I must confess, there are some radio programs in here, sport programs that you want to cry. Like, how did this person get here? But I always tell myself, I still listen to those programs. Mm. So what they are not doing right, so that I don't repeat that same mistake. Work on it. So I don't, some people ignorantly and um, carelessly, they make a mess of other people's program. They go on air and make the, the same mistake. mistake. It's just that you have the eloquence, you can use, run away with English. Yes, but there are people, English, and I always, yes, and I always, and I always <laughs> say this, there are so many bankers, so many uh, people in the oil sector, in the other sectors that are not sport related, who know these sports more than us. I always tell everybody that I've worked with, anybody who is on air with me. See, don't you see? It's a privilege for you to be on air, be on the set with a microphone. So whenever you are there, people should remember you for something. Since the way it is, don't sugarcoat it. Since there are some people who are in the banking sector, who are in different sectors, it's just that their profession they don't, but they know this sport. They have it because everybody has a, has a phone. They can browse this information. Mm -hmm. They know these things. They watch cable. They do. Uh, they travel out. So they. So when you are there, don't think you are the all-knowing. There are people who are not in that field with you, but they have bit, better knowledge than you in that same field. So I say, when you are there, do your homework thoroughly. When you go on air, give your information. So even there are times you make a mistake on air, and someone calls you and says, yes, ah, yeah, it was a mistake, I'm sorry. It takes nothing away from you. 
But sometimes even feel uh, that someone has been corrupted on air before, the person to cut the color off. And and the more you do that, the more other colors are calling in to let you know that what you are doing. We heard you. Yeah. So uh, there, was, there, was, there was this guy, it's not sport though. It was, it was a quiz. So, so what are the three arms of government? So I, I started messing, is it federal, state, or so three arms, three tiers? As a, mm, I was trying yeah. to, so I just said three arms. Is executive. So while I was trying to, so someone had called and said federal, state, and local. He said correct. You wait on. You have won the. Is it supposed to go? Won the ticket to go see a movie. So said okay, let's go pay some bills. and we'll come back. So when he put the call off, and I just said wait. I just said asked him three arms or three tears. He said, I better make I said, no, no. I think you're giving ah. this person the wrong answer. Misinform also. He said, no. I said, wait, when you compile this question, why didn't you check the answer? He said, in fact, it wasn't the one that said the question. It was the one get doing IT and intern that said the question. I said, he didn't verify. You're in the studio. There's internet everywhere. Why don't you? I said, you're giving the wrong answer. Now, the normal thing you would have done, you expect the person to do was call program start i'm sorry we gave you wrong whatever so he tried to downplay it and i said see don't allow them remind you as you open the show play around this like he tried to you can make joke out of it the guy continued next call the next person called and please the person that called last you he ended the person's call i said this boy i want to see how this will end you're making a big so up to five callers were now calling he will all hit so when I said and my next question he was please please that person that I said how long will you keep cutting them off he said let's send the SMSs on the same issue so while he was at it the GM and the head of station walked in I've listened to a program callers are trying to correct you and the guy was suspended but the father had to make him apologize first give the so I told him, well, why will you? Someone has given you, yes, we all make mistakes. Oh, it's obvious you didn't do your homework. Someone gave you the question. The person made a mistake. Now you have been told, why not open the show and play around it? Everybody will just laugh and and that was how. So most times people go on air, they just feel open mic, I'll talk with and I won't talk. So people prepare for exams. They take time to so when people go on air, they do their research as well. Mm. So I always say when you're going as a sport journalist, first and foremost. Whatever club you support, whichever club you support, don't let the callers or the masses know. Don't let them know. Because the more once they know and you make analysis that does not favor their club side, they try to make it look like you are anti their club and mm. they come at you. Which does not help. So sometimes and if you have not detached yourself from your emotions, the sentiments, sometimes you are emotional on air. You are, you are <laughs> this this code, this man, this code, yeah. this and all those. And like I said, there are people who are, who do that a whole lot of times. And for me, I feel it doesn't speak well. You must be a professional. If you're in your room, your living room, and your wife, uh, yes, do it. But when you go on air, so I, I'm telling you this. Uh, none of my colleagues I've worked with. Imagine how long I've been on the job. None of them know the football club I support, and it's a good thing. So the only club I allowed, okay, is anybody I told them. And I, so I follow basketball. Okay, I can tell you my basketball team, no problem. But see that football, which is the mother of all sports. No, I, will not. I don't. <laughs>